This short video is about Lab 7. In Lab 7, a couple of quick tips for Lab 7. First thing in Lab 7 is get the right data. Uh, the, if you brought the file down at the beginning of the semester to your home drive, you might have the wrong data. So make sure you got the right US counties, uh, dot shape in your Lab 7 directory. You might bring the whole Lab 7 directory down, uh, delete it off your home drive, uh, and uh, bring down the Lab 7 in its entirety to make sure you got the right data, but make sure you got the correct version. Now, in Lab 7, we're spending a lot of time at the beginning having you go through practice exercises. We're primarily using U.S. counties, and we're showing you how to display the information differently, how to then add fields and calculate values into those fields, and then display those calculated fields, and then how to select by attributes, which is very important instead of selecting by the rows like you did by hand in lab six. And then we're going through uh, a process where we want you to uh, create compound selections where you're doing uh, several different things, creating an index value and bringing several different pieces of information together to display, in this case, uh, the vacancy rate. Uh, uh, within the, the United States based on some index. So we do step by step, uh, and you want to do these steps, even though there's no turn-in, because you'll need to know this for the do the turn-in part of it. So really practice these exercises where you're, you're doing select by attribute, you're putting a clause together, you're adding this uh, combined query, and creating these, there's quite a number of them. So then when we get to uh, page 11, we actually start the work. And the, the work, uh, we're looking at counties, U.S. counties, that have lots of old people. So in this particular one, you're uh, adding a field, you're doing calculating a ratio, just like we taught, we taught you, but you have to follow through, and we don't give you the exact steps for it. You have to look back on your earlier work on how to calculate that old ratio. Then we show the old ratio, and we show that in quantiles, uh, in tens, so you get a little idea and give you an example of that. And then we have you select, use by select by attribute, select those counties that have a huge ratio, very, very high ratio in of old people to young people. And we have you bring those out as a separate file so that we could highlight those especially and uh, put that on top. So that's sort of a simple little map with a simple layout uh, showing that, that information. Now the second turn-in map is about, uh, about cows and about cow density per square mile. So now we're giving you a cow file, giving you a, a, the county, U.S. counties file, and we're also giving you a USDA file that has information about the cows. Now, in this particular case, uh, you've got to create two fields, one for the cows and another for the acres, because acres and square miles uh, calculation, because we want you to show per square mile, and what's in the file is acres. So you've got to know from lab chapter three that there's 640 acres in a, in a square mile. So we're uh, uh, taking the acres uh, value that's in the file and dividing it by 640 to get your uh, the amount of square miles that are in uh, each of the counties. And then we're using that with the cow information, uh, the number of cows within that county to figure out the number of cows per square mile, a little calculated field. It's fairly straightforward creating a, creating a map, but it's about a join. So this what, what this is, is about a join where we're joining this file, and the field we, we join together is the FIPS, the Federal Information Processing Standard. That's the code that has, there's a FIPS code, a unique FIPS code for every county. So the, in the, the ag, the USDA AG file, as well as in the cow, uh, there's in a, as well as in the U.S. counties file, that there's a FIPS code, and that's your common field that you're doing your join. And you're always, when you're doing a join, you're always taking the place on the earth and your uh, the the particular place on the earth. In this case, uh, and we're doing a join, and we're adding the join. So you're bringing the data to the the place on the earth. You never start on the external table and join the, the place on the earth to the external table. That will lose your place on the map. You'll have data joined together, but there'll no, be no where. So you're losing the where. So you always want to start with the where and bring the what, the external what to that. Okay, now the next one, now the next <clears throat> turn in, the third turn in, I'm giving you information about North Carolina, about soil information for a particular area in North Carolina. 
And all of these soil types, these are the different soil types, and this is just out of chapter 7 in the text, the soil types, the individual soil uh, uh, survey information. And these types exist, and then we're giving you some external information from the soil records that you're going to be typing in. So this particular standalone table, you type in. You create this standalone table, uh, uh, and you add the fields, the soil, ty soil type, the name, the fur class. You add those in, give them their types, whether they're text or whether they're uh, a double or whether they're, uh, a, uh, whether they're long integer. You give those the names and types, and then you have to type in each of those these values from the little table I give you. So you're building the table. And then once you've got that table built, you would then do another join, just like we're doing before, and we would join based on the common field. And in this case, our common field, in as we put this together, is the soil type. So the soil type is matched between these two. And then once you have the soil type together, you're able to... For the symbology here, you're able to, instead of showing the soil type, you actually would show information from your external table, which in this case is fertility class. So here's the fertility classes displayed. Uh, if, so you're joining an external file and you're displaying that information, but in this case you built the external file. Then, of course, you have a layout. Now in the layout, we do something a little different, not just show the layout with a little uh, legend and North Arrow scale bar, but we're also showing you how, and we give you some specific instructions, how to put the table, how to display the table on the same PDF. So, so this completes this short exercise. Thank you.